morning. Can you hear me? So far, good. Um, welcome to worship as we continue the season of Easter. Um, all of today's hymns are from Blue with One Voice, so we won't be using well, we will be using the Red Hymnal for the liturgy because we were working on a shortened version of the bulletin. And we were going to test it today, and it ended up that that was the one that was printed for you. So slow me down if I go too fast, because I'll have to turn to specific pages for the liturgy. I marked them in my bulletin, so hopefully I'll remember. If I go too fast, say too fast, or what page? And um, it'll remind me to slow down a little bit. Um, we intended to start this in June when we went to the summer season, but it looks like we went a little quick with it. The lessons are not printed in the bulletin, and we're going to fix that. Like I said, this is supposed to be a test. So the description of the lesson is written in your bulletin. There are Bibles in the pew if you'd like to pick them up and look up the passage. The first reading and the second reading and the gospel, all three are from the New Testament. So they're pretty close to each other in the Bible. And I don't know if you noticed, coinciding with this were some other changes as far as technology. I do not have a clicker sitting up front because everything has been transferred to the balcony. So we're waiting. Does that mean good or bad? I think it's okay. <laughs> it's working. Yeah, it's working. So now whoever's cooking, you do not see. And hopefully, you're going to be able to keep up with everything. If you cannot see the screen and you're having trouble following the bulletin, move closer. But then the idea is that we use the screen and cut down on use of our paper. That was the original intent in going through the screen. Okay, now that I explained all that, there's a couple of missions in the bulletin, like the principle of praise and the auditory prayer. I'll announce those when we get to them. Prayer updates to Ed Dawson's from his brother. I actually went home from the hospital after surgery. His jaw is nailed shut, <laughs> is wired shut, and he's eating nothing but liquids. Kind of amazing. Leona Mickelson was admitted to and discharged from the Sioux Falls um, Hospital for Surgery. She's looking at moving to Balaton, maybe later this week. Um, they're looking at having a bed ready for her to go there. And a couple of our members are having surgical procedures this week, so please keep in mind those having tests and procedures. That's all I have for prayer announcements. Are there any others or anything to add? Seeing none. Tuesday we have quilters. Wednesday is the church council, and that is all I have on my record of events happening this week. Tuesday is Bible study. Bible study is in place of quilters at 9 o'clock on Tuesday. Thank you. Anything else? Seeing none, please stand if you are able and turn to page 95 in the red ELW. We'll begin with the confession. It's in the front of your book. I'll turn to you with you, so I hope this is going too fast. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have been from you and give ourselves over all of our sin. We are truly sorry and humble to death. In your compassion, forgive us our sins and all of them are known. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and hold us by your spirit. God, who has richly mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. That by grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power. Through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn, oh, yes, is Bind Us Together. It is in the original. We will have been known as to you if you've chosen to use him, but that's okay. Uh, Bind Us Together with one voice, seven, four, eight. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the piece. Thank you. One point. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray together. The prayer of the day is in your voice. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love all one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his divine love with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue with the first reading. The first reading is from Acts chapter 7. Stephen was one of the seven men chosen by the apostles to serve tables so that the apostles could be free to serve the word. Stephen does more than distribute food, however. For his preaching of God's word, he becomes the first martyr of the faith. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said. I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of the young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had done this, had said this, he died. The Psalm of Psalm 31, we will read responsibly. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Take me never, let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. I Let 
Let your face shine out upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The second reading is from 1 Peter. Christ is the cornerstone of God's saving work and the foundation of our lives. We are God's chosen holy people who continuously celebrate and declare the mercy of God we experience through Jesus Christ. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen in impressions in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be holy, a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey, disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are the chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, <coughs> God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. He ran the lesson. <laughs> Glory to you, O Lord. On the night before he was arrested, Jesus shares his final words with his disciples. As one through whom God is known, he promises to go before them and to act on their behalf. The text begins. Jesus said to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come to you and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you'll know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father, who from now on you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show me the Father? Do you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But you do not then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in my Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. 
seated, I left the beverage sugar in the pan. your houses, your homes, where you live. What's your favorite room? the king. He went into his house at the end. And it was really big and the whole family stood on the balcony. That's a mansion. A castle is considered like a mansion. He said, in my father's house there's a lot of rooms but there's a lot of mansions. So they, the disciples were like, oh, okay. Well, there's a place for us to sleep. We can follow you but we don't know the way. Jesus says, trust me and you'll know the way. That's the thing. I wanted to show you guys a picture that my children drew for me. And this is right when they were You guys might recognize it. All around it are little pictures that Ebenezer drew. And my sister in the middle wrote this. And this is her favorite song. This is called Our House. It says, Our house is a very, very, very fine house. With two cats in the yard, life used to be so hard. Now everything is easy because of you. And in each picture, up here is the five of us. So that's Tim and I, and two girls, Stephanie and Elizabeth, and my my sister Aunt Patty. I know we don't have two cats, but we've got Nikki, the dog, and George the cat. And she drew all of them with Nikki and George. Oh, both girls drew all these pictures. And then later, we took it and had it framed. And we're like, look, oh, it's so you guys can see it. But we're all in there. And they drew it. It's not because the house is a dwelling. It's because it's a home. You love your home because your family is there, right? And the disciples wanted to make sure that they had a place to go when Jesus left them. And they were really nervous about that. And you see all the pictures. Love you, Mom and Dad. They drew lots of things, didn't they? This is one of their most favorite things. And they were about your age when they drew this. So draw your mom one, and she'll say this too. I bet you have, haven't you? I love Mom and Dad. But they drew the house. They drew the pets. They drew. Here's they're playing soccer. Are we playing soccer down here? Yep. And Dad's playing ball with the dogs down here. There's a swing. Oh, no, roller skating. We used to skate out in the street. Look, there's a car, too. <laughs> Be careful of the car. But anyway, we, let's pray for Thanksgiving for our homes because we love where we live and for the fact that Jesus promises us that even one day when we die, we'll have a home to go to. We always will have a home, okay? And that's what 
for today's thought was all about. Let's pray. We thank you, Jesus, for giving us wonderful homes here. We love our rooms. We love our families. We love everything about them. And someday we know we'll have to leave them. But you have promised us a place in heaven, whether it be our own room or a mansion. We don't know, but we're going to follow you to that place. And we know that you will take care of us because you promised us. This we know and pray in your name. Amen. Amen. So go home and enjoy your home. Enjoy your picture of your home for your mom. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're still in the Easter season, although today's gospel reading takes place the evening before Jesus' crucifixion. He's along with his disciples, and he's giving them last-minute instructions. He's talking about his hopes, his dreams, and reassurances for the future, where he will be going. And we read this passage earlier this year during Holy Week, the week before Easter. And we know also that he's giving them the promise of the Holy Spirit, which will happen in our church here in the, the next two weeks. This is a piece of time from then until now that the disciples are, in, are a significant piece of time because of the present value to the disciples. They are still mourning Jesus' death. And it's right at the end, they're going to keep doing that until after Jesus' ascension. They're waiting for the presence of the Holy Spirit, but it's this particular conversation that they're going to remember. They recall it, and it gives them hope for the future. Richard Rohr is a spiritual director. He's one of several that has written about this. But it writes about something called liminal space. Liminal space is a period of time that means threshold. A liminal space is in all of our lives, and it has a beginning and it has an end, although it's hard to pinpoint when those exactly are. But here are some examples. It's a period of time between the death of a loved one and the easing of your grief. Make sense? Other times, it can be the period of time from the diagnosis of a disease to either you're healed from it or if the disease is totally resolved. How about when a person is filled with uncertainty with decisions until the decision is made? All of these periods of time, thresholds of time, are called liminal space. And what happens during these periods of time is there's a tendency to look backward and, and look at how you make decisions, and there's also a tendency to look forward. So it's an uncertain period of time when you're looking backwards and forwards. Feelings during this time can range from fear and confusion to deep sorrow to deep love. There's a variety of decisions. And as I read more about this concept of liminal space, it seemed to me most people that the death of a loved one creates a liminal space for a lot of us. And if I look back over my own life, I would agree with that idea because it really wasn't until six months after my father died that I sort of one day I woke up and I knew that I was really, really depressed. And sometimes a liminal period can last a good while. It can be months, even a year or more. There's another piece about liminal 
space. It is a threshold of time and space, but it always seems to occur where there's a life change happening. Another thing could be like a graduation coming up for our seniors. Graduation usually is a liminal space or the end of one. Moving to a new home also can precede or follow a period of time, liminal space. Oddly enough, our whole nation went through a liminal space when we came to the end of COVID. It was a beginning, it had a beginning and it had an end. It was a time filled with uncertainty and for, with a variety of emotions. We reflected as a nation a lot and we wondered if things would ever return to normal. We asked ourselves what the future would be like. See how you do a lot of reflecting in that liminal space? Well, today's gospel is about the disciples experiencing liminal space. They found themselves asking themselves, what is happening? Things are changing. Jesus has died. What are we supposed to do? Will things ever be the same as they were before he died? See, they're thinking back on an event that happened during Holy Week. Will it ever be normal again? They remembered everything Jesus said before he died. They were asking himself, themselves liminal space questions. They were trying to figure out what to do or how they're supposed to feel. They remembered then what their Lord had told them previously. And at that time, when it occurred, they figured that he was just teaching them. And it really made sense, but now it has a different meaning. That whole event now connects them to their future and the promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit. So what did they remember? Jesus said, I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. Verse 19. And the disciples thought, oh good, we won't be alone. Jesus said, I am the Spirit of truth, the Spirit advocate, he will be with you forever. Verse 16 through 18. And the disciples thought, oh, you mean someone else is coming too? No, we'll have you know God with us. And Jesus also said, those who love me will be loved by my Father. In verse 23. And the disciples thought, yes, Lord. We love you now, and we always will. We have nothing to fear. You see, we need liminal space to make sense of our world. And perhaps it's better to say our faith needs liminal space in order for us to think and process and be given the time to look both backwards and forwards in time. The disciples remembered and they were able to have hope that their faith gave them to face that uncertain future. They didn't get all the answers, but they were reassured that they weren't alone. And they didn't have to face the future alone that God would always love them. And isn't that all any of us need to get through any kind of liminal space? To hold on to our faith and to cling to God's promises. And you know, maybe if more of the world around us slowed down and stayed and understood and thought about things during their own liminal space, perhaps they too would experience God through their faith. Amen. Our
our hymn of the day is Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks. In the blue hymnal, all the verses, um, there's five verses. Let's sing the first three. First three verses, uh, number six, seven, one. Please stand. If you're able, we will continue with the Apostles' Creed. Page 105, if you'd like to follow, it also will be on the screen. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, ascended into heaven. And he rose again, he ascended again. Right hand of the Father, and he will come to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. Resurrection of the life and the life of Amen. We'll go ahead with the prayers of intercession and then I'll share the peace. United in the hope and the joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all in need. God of life, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel even in times of trouble. Bless all deacons and strengthen them for their bridge-building ministry between the church and world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through the mighty waters, towering mountains, verdant fields, and deserts. Protect the Earth's diverse habitats from all forms of pollution, erosion, extinction, and global warming. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Mighty God, your spirit guides us into all truth. Give wisdom to the world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and all organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt following conflict, unrest, or natural disaster. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in their heart. We pray for all who are sick, especially those on our prayer list. Hear us, O oh God. Assuring God, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Uphold people in our community who have recently moved, changed jobs, schools, retired, or are going through transitions of any kind. Lead us in your ways. Hear us, O oh God. Renewing God, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us. Grant confidence and comfort for all awaiting the place that you have prepared. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our arms and our prayers and praise to you, singing our eternal praises through God, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another. We'll continue with the offering.
Let us pray. The um, arbitrary prayer will be up on the screen. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of the earth. Day by day you shower us. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you. Dear Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who has given himself to take away our sin, who has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all of the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all of the creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and give our unending praise. was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and he broke it gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me afterwards he took the cup after he had blessed it he gave it to them and said drink this cup all of it all of you this cup is a new covenant in my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin do this in remembrance of me. Then Jesus and his disciples prayed together, and they said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the Lord's table. You be seated. this side.
please stand, if you're able, for the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you, strengthen you, and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The closing hymn is, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Number 673 in your blue hymnal. the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week, everyone.